Um, that's for you. Um, as one of the newer developers in Chalam, uh, you mentioned that uh, ICT is now more well known as a tourist destination rather than a mixed commercial uh, uh, property destination. Do you think that's the way forward for, for new developers you know, to, to ensure that your uh, MSC status, knowledge base, uh, also known as a shopping centre, do you think that's the way forward for new developers? There, there are two angles on looking at it. Uh, we were looking at, at some of the so-called uh, abundant projects you know, uh, at one time. And one of the things we noticed was that those who tend to be abundant were standalone. So the high-rise standalone always had problems. And we, we, we reckon that, that probably that, that if they actually configure it so that it's not just a standalone development, but you know, it's part and parcel of other activities and so on, then the, the potential for the high rate to be successful will be, will be greater. You know. But then, the second point of view is that when we started in, in Shalang, this was in 2002-2003, I mean, the, the challenge was how do you create a different economic activity that can spur the development. Okay? And so we thought that, okay, maybe if I have the MSC, I can encourage the office people there, and if I have if I can create a tourism nation, I can create a different economic activity. And that's how the, the, the MSC and the tourism thing came about. Okay? So uh, we wanted to use this uh, as a way to create, I think, uh, to, to spur, I think, the, 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 the vitality of the place. Of course, behind sight, you can say, oh, you know, we are successful. But those days, if you look back 10 years ago, and, and we were trying to figure out whether that was the correct thing, you know, it was something, uh, there was a lot of debate on whether it was the correct move or not. Like. So, of course, if you ask me now what I'm going to do for my next project, I'll say, yeah, you know, I'm going to look at, at creating an economic base you know, to support my development because that will then ensure that I, I you know, indirectly create a demand for my property development as I, as I proceed. Now. Can I ask you, what do you think is the role of the local authority, specifically for Shalam, in enabling uh, transformation or enabling Shalam to move forward? We have a plan prepared for about 43,000 acres of land as a single planning. And this is where I see local authorities' assistance is very important. And they understand what are the requirements of developers. They look at the guidelines available and suggest things that make it even easier. Yeah. So when you start to see things beyond those boundaries of uh, your land, then you start to see a lot of positive things. And from our experience, Shah Alam embraced that very well. And in the 20 years that we have been in business in Shah Alam, we have got a lot of cooperation, not just from the local authorities, a lot of engagement with the residents and the politicians as well. So these are things where we feel Shah Alam has a bright future. And of course, as you know, we are also very big in Shah Alam. And we intend to grow Shalam as, uh, as it uh, goes into the next step of uh, city development. And you will see a lot of good identity that is coming up. Yeah? Developers have a role to push boundaries and the authorities have a role to regulate. But also, you know, I mean, although I have brought up points uh, for which as developers, uh, you know, our, our, our Real Estate Housing Developers Association, we hope that uh, the state authorities and also the local councils will look into. But I must also, you know, applaud the forwardness for which I uh, you know the the in the past we have worked with uh, in terms of this approach. Um, if not, we would not have been able to do things in our developments like uh, removal of of tarmac in the side lanes and the back lanes. Yeah. Because the idea when we when we want to build Canberra Bar was to build a uh, first green township yeah. in the country, and it has to be fully integrated. So you look at current uh, landed houses and the, the old ones which were built last time. Um, the concept is a very nice uh, one where you can actually go through every anywhere. Thing. You know, can you can it's a thoroughfare to every single mm. different corner. A lot of accessibility. Today we're trying to narrow everything to one single entry and exit point for security reasons. Our <clears throat> you know uh, our living uh, situation has come to the point that we really you know. Um, Put priority in terms of security and safety. So these are important things that we take into account. And if back lanes were the previous back lanes, you know, in which I grew up 20, 30 years ago, 
uh, they're old tarmac roads, smelly drains, you know, curry poured down uh, the back, and then, you know, kids trying to cycle behind that. I think no parent will allow their kids to now go in an open, open area for fear of kidnapping and other, other, other type of crimes. So it's very important that we rethink how a development should be. And you know, by removing things like this, we actually create areas where people and families can walk and jog. That creates neighborhood security, creates neighborhood engagement with, uh, with people. And uh, you know, I must say that an important uh, shout out council that they have actually agreed with this, although it is uh, not easy. Yeah. It took us a long, uh, a long road to actually be able to convince them that actually this is the way forward, especially in terms of uh, developing green buildings and green townships nowadays. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of this special uh, roundtable on Chalam development. I think it's been an enlightening discussion. Uh, I personally have learned quite a lot from this discussion and I think in some ways, uh, you gentlemen have put to rest some misconceptions people may have about Chalam.